Right then, welcome back to Tabletop RPG Time. Uh, we're going to play Portal at Hill House tonight. Uh, and the most important opening step, other than sorting the... Uh, sorry, I'm trying to flip through this notebook so you guys don't see my chicken scratch on various other games. Uh, because it's very important to me that you only see those when it is appropriately timed so other than um other than drawing the house that we're going to be exploring one of the most important prep steps for this game is to sort the cards because they need to be sorted by suit should i have done that during the starting soon maybe this is more fun though How have you all been? I have been busy. Big, big busy. I've been trying to uh, pump more time into paper cuts. Um, just because the farther ahead I am on that, the easier it is for me to do fun things. We need one of the jokers. We do not need the other one. Uh, I actually prepped like a good little gerblin today, and I uh, read the rules a little bit, so I know a little bit of what we're doing. But like I have said many times, I don't read the prompts, so this is entirely improvised. Uh, you know, none of this is scripted, other than, you know, the scripted segments in the game. I do not know the story. I do not do not know the story I'm going to tell at the beginning of the stream. That's a very important aspect of the game for me. Now that we have these sorted, I believe turn zero for this game is a majority just sorting the cards and then drawing the house. So let me look. Also, I'm looking into getting my rules in EPUB format so you all can see them. Uh, you see how there's a little chat window underneath me? I might replace that with a little e-reader window in the same way that I have, you know, the, the big window for paper cuts. I may get, uh, I may start getting my rules in EPUB format, you know, an ebook. So that you all can see them and watch me frantically scroll for rules. That's not uh I that's not set in stone. I need to make sure I can show rules text. Uh there might be some issues with that. So we first describe the house, and then we roll a six-sided die three times as we enter the house. And then uh, we remove the jokers, separate out the individual card suits, we shuffle the individual decks of card suits face down. So I'm going to assume that these are shuffled, because we shuffled the deck last time we played with it. I clearly remember that for once. And so I'm going to assume that these are shuffled. And then we shuffle, and then we place one joker into the face down spades deck, which is this one. Yes, so uh, there. So they need to go in a specific order. It needs to go hearts, clubs. So this is hearts, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. We shuffle, we have shuffled one joker in to the appropriate set of cards. The other joker gets set aside along with the blank card. Uh, and then we start investigating locations after we have drawn the house. So, let us draw the house first, shall we? So, uh, in the portal at Hill House, you are a solitaire wanderer brought to the ancient house for an unknown reason. Here you find an interdimensional portal has opened. For the sake of humanity, it must be closed, 
but you do not know how nor where to find the necessary tools. Instead of wisely turning around, you feel drawn in, unable to turn away. Instead, you place one foot in front of the other, step by step, making your way to the front porch. You are in front of the hill house, unable to escape. As you stand before the hill house, you take in its details. The cracked chunks of concrete, wood stripping off the sides, broken bits of illustrious beauty, now lost to age, weather, and time. What else do you see? We see a two-story, uh, a two-story farmhouse that has a single, uh, parapet tower rising from the, uh, from the left side. Uh, it seems to have been, in a past life, a very large and imposing building, but the years have worn it down in a major, severe way. Uh, it, it clearly used to be white. It was most recently painted white, but, it, uh, but the ravages of time have done it no favors. The white paint is flaking off in chunks as large as our hands or more. Uh, the the shingles look like they have been needing replaced for 20 years or more. There is a small ring of shingles that have fallen off of the house. Uh, these are just pretty standard black tar shingles overgrown with an, with an almost incredible volume of dark green moss. Uh, and there's, there is almost a ring around the house of these shingles. Uh, and strangely enough, the shingles extend forward down the path that we're standing at the foot of. Uh, as I've said, it's a two-story house. The windows lie dark and dormant, and the shutters creak eerily in the wind. So let's draw this house here. My immediate first thought is it's a square floor plan. This is a very old building, and so it's very simple for to produce a square floor plan other than this parapet off here on the left side. So let's go square. This is floor. Uh, let's include a basement. Let's say the basement is a floor, but this is floor one. So floor one. That is entirely illegible to the viewer. Uh, let me get this down in pencil and then I will go grab a thicker marker so you all can see. How does that sound? So we have our large first floor here that has a small uh, parapet tower, so to speak. One of my lights is visibly flickering. Uh, my, my RV has decided to uh, provide the appropriate ambiance for approaching a, a most likely haunted house. Uh, so then within this, the front door lies here. Hopefully you all can see uh, what I mean. Y you can't at all. So I'm going to be describing this as I draw it, which is going to make it exponentially harder. Hooray. So there is a small, uh, what I'm going to describe as mud room here. Mud room. Wow, my handwriting is especially horrible tonight. <laughs> That's not even, like, legible as the word room. I'm going to move these. I'm going to move these so I'm not bumping them with my wrist as I'm writing and drawing. Let me just, uh, very quickly throw down these rooms as I'm thinking of them. And so that you do not have to sit here and be like, what's he drawing? What's he drawing? I can't see. What's he drawing? Uh, let me just write down the pencil marks very quickly here. So there is a hallway here. Uh, there is a small room here. The hallway continues down into the living room, which is then uh, the kitchen would go... So there is, there are stairs here that would put the kitchen here, the pantry here. There is a large-ish, there's a relatively large living space here, 
and then that extends to a back door. Or no, the back door is here. Sorry, I'm I'm visualizing an actual building here. Uh, I'm taking a few liberties, so it's not blatantly obvious what I'm doing, uh, except for the people who uh, know the building that I'm probably describing. Uh, so there's a porch here. There is a there's another little like mud room area here, and then there's another little hallway. There's a room here, and then the rest of this. There's a little door here. There is a sliding door here. Dot, dot, dot. Um, this is an open doorway. This is an open doorway. Um, hi, library. There is a door here. Um, kitchen, 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 kitchen. There is a open doorway here. Good lord, kitty. Does nobody love you? Come up here. Come up here. Get me some views if you're gonna hassle me so. <laughs> this is library. He's He is very insistent this fine evening. Aren't you? Doesn't nobody love you, kitty cat? Huh? Yeah. I'm just gonna mark this as an open doorway so it's a little clearer on the blueprint here. Um... Yeah, well, sorry, kitty. I need to get up for a second. Um, but I was just up there. I'm going to be right back. Do I have the be right back text on the screen? Library, stop stabbing me. Buddy, I'm going to get up in like two seconds here to grab a, a marker. Hang on. Text on screen. We are now. Be right back. Actually, let's mark this technical difficulties. <laughs> technical difficulties, everyone. Uh, I need to go grab a marker because my brain is huge, large, big, and I didn't think about the fact that you will not be able to see the things I am drawing. Uh, yeah, that, that pen will be too thin. I'm going to go grab a marker real quick. Nobody catch fire while I'm gone, okay? That is an express order. No fire in the chat. Also, don't antagonize the mods. They're good people. Why, well, yes, I did keep my markers in the car. Don't ask. <laughs> oh, I let a moth in. Oh, no. Now, library, Magnus, you two are going to need to catch the moth. It is a good part of why I keep you around, other than the obvious of various affections. Okay. My, di my difficulties are no longer technical. Let me just make double sure nothing's on fire when I switch the screen over. Boop. Okay. Now let me mark this in. So I grabbed a, a literal handful of markers here. Let's try... Let's try black. Okay. So these are stairs, so we're just going to put a little central dot in here, and we're going to go boop, 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 and hopefully those read as stairs. So this is the uh, library. Good, good heavens. <laughs> are you going to be in the way? I hope you enjoy being in the way. You think, no, I didn't really want to be in the way. I just wanted to be sort of in the way. I just want to be part of things. Yeah, okay. So we have this up. You let that screen door alone, young man. 
I have publicly embarrassed your brother for less. <laughs> My brother looks so mad at me right now. So this... Hopefully this is a little more readable. Yeah, this is definitely more readable. So I'm just going to, like, sketch this out super quick with pencil and then uh, fill it in with marker. So then I'm not trying to sketch with permanent marker. Hopefully this isn't bleeding too bad in the next page. It's not. Good. So, this is the general footprint of the house. And that's going to extend upward one more floor. Within the house, there are one, two, actually I think this wall is further that way in the building that I'm thinking of, but it's fine. We can have them be a little different. Uh, and then this, there are three rooms, four rooms, One hallway, five rooms, six rooms, seven rooms, uh, eight if you count the mud room here. There are doors here, 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 and here. This room is the mud room. This is bedroom. Bedroom uh, A, let's say, because we're gonna have to number these later. Uh, this is a dining room. Hopefully my handwriting is not completely illegible to you. It is upside down, though. Look, ooh, ooh, I have a way to fix that. Oh, I forgot about this. I forgot I have a way to fix this. Filters. Text direction readable. Yes. <laughs> I have activated my true wizard power. Let me get this wire out of the frame real quick. Uh, that's a dining room. This is a kitchen. Uh, should I print or should I... Um, hey, it's Goriki wearing his little mod mask. Big brain. Okay, vitally important thing based on what you can see. Should I print or use my actual handwriting? Anyway, this is a kitchen. I'll, I'll listen for your response. This is a pantry pantry uh this is a living space living room if you will uh i can't actually read either please print okay so this is a i will try to print largely so it is at least vaguely readable um that's the living room this is a hallway we're just gonna say hallway hallway uh there is a door here this is a sliding door so we'll mark it this way there's a dotted line there for a sliding door this is uh i guess music room would be the best would be the best description of this music room music room uh, this would be a screened porch. So we're just going to... Uh, let's give it a fancy name. Let's give it the... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like an attached greenhouse arboretum, maybe? Uh, Three-season room? Arboretum. We're going to say arboretum. That sounds fancier. Arb... Or... Eat... Oh? Uh, this is a porch porch closet this is a door uh the arboretum opens into the living room a conservatory 
was the word I was looking for. Thank you, Jev. Uh, so this is floor one. Floor one. What is a greenhouse attached to a house called? Image result for a greenhouse attached to a house. Conservatory is a building or room having glass or other transparent roofing and walls used as a greenhouse or a sunroom. Arboretum is trees. Ah! I was like, Arboretum sounds wrong because Arbor is tree. Uh, yeah, it's not the Arboretum. You both are correct. It is the conservatory. I have not played Clue in a thousand years, and that's why I didn't think of it. This is the conservatory. And yes, I did misspell it based on the way I pronounce it. Uh, okay, so that's floor one of the house. No worries, you have words people in chat at the moment. I always appreciate having people words people in chat. Okay, so then the rest of the house, the second floor of the house, I should say, has the conservatory and the music room are single floor. So then the rest of the house has a wall here-ish, a wall here-ish, and then the spire for the spire there-ish. Uh, wall here-ish, and I think this, no, that wall's flush, okay. Sorry, I'm thinking of a literal physical building I have been in while I'm doing this. Um, okay, and then we come up the stairs, stairs, boop, 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 boop. Hopefully those imply stairs as I think they do. Stairs. <laughs> Uh, we come up the stairs, there is a, oh, library, ironically, there is a library, library baby, whoa, 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 don't puke there, take it easy, baby, oh, big puke, we okay, oh, one moment, cat puked, uh, Ironically, there is a library. I was about to draw it, and then the library was like, Oh, someone said my name? I better puke. Oh. Life is full of fun this evening. Um, I don't have any paper towels. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, gang. I don't have any paper towels. Um, how am I going to clean this? I don't have any paper towels. Hmm. Hmm. I may have to address the, the cat puke after the stream. We're going to do that. It's going to be more problems for me, future me, but that's a problem for future me. I mean, I guess lots of toilet paper. The problem is... Anyway, I will address that later. It's... The sacrificial suck! <laughs> Oh man, we are we are we are feeling the struggle tonight. Um, do I have any takeout napkins left? Oh, I actually might. Hmm. We are we are in a spot tonight, aren't we, gang? Uh, this is why I can't have nice things. Oh. But what I can have are takeout napkins that will work perfectly. Uh, yes, through the power of hoarderism, <laughs> I have I have a way to clean up the cat puke. We take those. Ah, the height of joy. Okay, now that I've <laughs> take out napkins, they're thirty three percent wax, and ultimately need lead to disaster. It worked though. <laughs> we take those. Okay, now where was I? 
I believe I was about to say there is a library here. Calculating, ruminating. Yes, the stairs open into the library. There is a door here. Oop, bonk. Hi, kitty. This is the one that puked. Everybody wave hello to the library. He's like, oh, don't tell them I puked. Too late. Too late, kitty. Too late. You're so full of puke. He just eats too fast. I promise he's okay. Um, okay, there, this open, this door opens into, I believe there is a hallway here that continues downward. There are two rooms, two more bedrooms here. A storage room here. And then... Uh, I don't remember what's in this space, so we're just gonna, we're gonna put the door for that here. I believe there was a, no, 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 there was a, oh, there was a bathroom here that was only accessible through this bedroom. So this is bedroom. So this is the library. L I library and then there are bedrooms here bedroom B leave a door here there is a sliding door in here Bedroom C, storage, storage closet with an S apparently. Oh yes, no one love him. No one care for him. This is a bathroom. And this is a this is bedroom D. I believe that is the uh, there is also a basement, but it is a one big area basement. And I've decided the basement won't matter. Whatever this thing is, uh. It has decided that the basement is too full of spiders and water and problems, uh, and it's not going to care. <laughs> Whatever this eldritch horror is that we're going to interact with. So this is our building. This is floor two of the building. This is floor one. We are here. Uh, maybe a little blue dot. So we start there. Don't go down into the basement is correct. It's full of spiders and uh, cherry, cherry, canned, chan, canned grape juice that has sat there so long it's become wine and uh, pickles that have become God only knows what and, you know, various other things. Uh, an entire potato plant that has taken over a corner of the building. Basement's boring anyway. It's either full of nothing until it's needed or horror. Correct. Anyway, we've designed our building. Uh, we are here. We are at the foot of a path leading up to this building. Uh, as I've described, it's a tall, uh, somewhat church-like old building with flaking white paint and dark windows and ominously creaking shutters. Now we come to the fun part. Especially if you're a college co-ed. Yeah, definitely don't go in the basement if you're a college co-ed. That won't end well for you. We've described the house. Uh, if anything is unusual about the house, uh, like we said, the most unusual thing about the house is it seems to be visually 
have been a church at one point in its life. It's not a church anymore. It was refitted into a uh, into a boarding house, but uh, now it's it, now it had people and it doesn't have people. So we uh, we grasp the knob to the front door and stagger backwards as flashes of random objects explode in our mind's eye. A glimpse of the future to show us what vital items we are looking for. Roll this excited die three times. Definitely may be haunted. Uh, roll this excited die three times. The first object is a material object uh, that we are looking for in the hearts of the deck. The four uh, is a candle. So the first thing we see burst across our mind's eye is uh, sitting in a place that is very blurred to us. We are unsure where there is an aging candelabra uh, etched with a man crucified and uh, on his arms, on each end of his hands are two candles and a third candle sprouts from his head. And that's what we're looking for in the hearts deck, the four of hearts. Let's note that down. The four of hearts. And the second object to burst across our mind, an ancient element, is antimony. Uh, a second... A second thing bursts across our mind, and hidden amongst uh, many items on a shelf is a small bottle labeled A.T. And uh, unfortunately, our chemistry knowledge reminds us that that means antimony. So we do know what that is. Uh-oh. Uh, the two of clubs, 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 clubs. That's a clubs, right? I can draw. <laughs> and the third and last item we are looking for is an arcane artifact. It bursts over our mind that we are searching for something called the Flame of Fu. Uh, rather than an image this time, we feel an uncomfortable prickling warmth spread over our body. Our ears fill with the crackle of... Uh, a fire long laid dormant uh, and struggling for f struggling for fuel as it sways this way and that so we are looking for the six of diamonds These are the items we need to seal the portal. We're not sure what they look like or where they are, but our brain was given an image to try and suggest that we know what they look like. But we do know that it's what is needed to seal the strange portal. If we gather all three items before time runs out, we seal the portal and prevent it from swallowing up you, the house, and worst of all, the entire earth. We've set up our locations, we have drawn our map and so now we label each room with a number. Let's see, is this yellow visible on screen? I hope so. I'm just gonna put a little circle there. Is that visible? That is not visible. Okay, uh, what about this green? How about you? Are you visible? Yes, the green is visible. So we'll label the rooms with the green. So uh, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I missed the bottom of that eight. It's fine. Nine, ten, eleven. Uh, do we number? Do we continue to number these sequentially? Uh, do we continue to number these sequentially on the second floor? Any 13 locations and number them. Okay, so we're up to 11, so we get two locations on the second floor. Oops! Uh, so the bedrooms go mostly unregarded, let's say. We will definitely be going to the library, and, um... You know what? This bathroom's already had, uh, always had a spooky vibe. 
uh, this bathroom is the next place we is the last place we might look. So uh, choose a location to enter and circle the number. So we immediately, after having this vision, shake the thoughts out of our mind and step forward into the mud room. And we circle our one. And uh, as we enter the build a house of 13 rooms and none as a bedroom. Ooh. <laughs> Did I do that on purpose? Maybe. Uh, okay, so then we choose a location to enter, circle the number, and draw one card each from the hearts, the clubs, and the diamonds. And then reveal the cards and reference them with the location aspects on pages 12 and 13. Sounds like it would pass council inspection. <laughs> Uh, we then label our journal entry, the name of the location. Doesn't really count because we're talking to the camera. And then write write at least three to five sentences explaining what you find. So I'm going to pull these cards and see what they tell me about uh, entering, this, entering the mud room. And then we're going to monologue for a little bit. Five to seven sentences, about a paragraph. If you reveal a card that is one of the items you need to seal the portal... Ignore the description for that card and instead describe what the object looks like. Uh, do you need to know that the actual chemical symbol for antimony is SB, not AT? Dang it. <laughs> I knew I knew something in the general area of antimony had one of those. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, SN is tin, so it can't be that. It must be AT. No. Also, tin probably isn't in the same area as antimony. They don't behave similarly. Can you tell I passed high school chemistry? <laughs> anyway, we don't need to know that the chemical symbol is, is SB, not AT, but I do appreciate the correction because I would have been sitting here getting it wrong all night. Anyway, if we find an item, we describe the object, where it was in the room, how it feels, what it looks like, and how it might be integral in sealing the portal. We then draw a spade after describing things, and uh, it des it describes the passage of time and how it affects the house. No, do not be sorry. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate the correction. Uh, you mustn't dawdle. Google is my friend. Too long ago to remember for me. Yeah, <laughs> I I'm shocked that like you most of the elements that weren't like just obvious abbreviations I had committed to memory in high school. The rest of them I didn't. I was no fool. I'm like, they're going to give us a periodic table and a test. But, like, the ones that weren't obvious, I was like, oh, no, no trivia questions are going to get me. And then they did. Anyway, we enter the mud room. Uh, Zeke Zoot, apparently. My phone has big opinions about things. Uh, b -b 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 Charts. So, we enter the mud room and find that is that it is luminescent and brilliant. Oh, okay. Uh, we find an object in the location, a round table covered in an old ragged cloth, and the condition of the location is uh, covered in old paint. So we enter the mud room and find that uh, in every gap in the ragged, cracking paint is some kind of mold? Fungus? It's not exactly clear. We were never a botanist. But something has been growing into the cracks in the paint and trying to spread throughout the rest of the house. It is glowing an unsettling light blue. Uh, and as we enter, the wind of the door opening uh, rustles everything in there. And uh, the light flickers ominously against our eyes and against the walls. And we realize that this place uh, might be overgrown in a very unpleasant way. And uh, really wish that we had remembered our gas mask, or our, uh, our filtration mask in the car. But we went, oh no, we won't need the filtration mask this time. But as we breathe in, we... <laughs> oh, 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 realize that we probably should have brought that along. Exactly. These spores uh, are stirred up by our passage and spread not only uh, throughout the room landing, 
uh, small glowing motes upon a table that uh, has a ragged dark blue cloth uh, coating it, but also the spores uh, snort right up our nose as we breathe and cough and try to breathe further. <laughs> And uh, we, we realize that this place, uh, this place may be much more fearsome than we originally expected. Which is saying something, because we know it used to be a church. Finally, the passage of time passage, passages. Uh, and we continue exploring uh, without anything happening, because we pulled the two of spades. Uh... And then, do we just pick a number at random, or do we go through them in order? I believe we pick a number at random. D, 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 D. Choose a location, enter, and circle the number. Okay, we just pick a number at random. Okay, as we... Uh... Oh, there's a, there's a door here. I forgot to draw that. Um, there is a door into that hallway, I promise. It's actually a... Uh... It's actually an open archway, but we'll make it a door. Uh, so we decide immediately, uh, I'm not going forward. Those spores have grown in a horrifying mat over the door forward. And so we decide to turn to our left and enter the kitchen. And let's see what we find there. The Ten of hearts, the four of clubs, and the King of Diamonds. This feels very tarot, pulling three cards to determine aspects. Um, I like it a lot, actually. Uh, it is insignificant and colorless. Uh, there is the laughter of a small child uh, emanating somewhere in the room, and it is... Uh, there is no longer a door in the entryway. It is in absolute shambles. So, uh, as we turn to our left, uh, away from the horrifying spore mat that has coated the doorway forward, we realize that there is, uh, there is a door leaning loosely against the right, against the wall to our left. Uh, there's an RPG called Deadlands that uses playing or poker cards for stats and die rolls. That's fun. I like that idea. I might have to dig up Deadlands. I love, I love weird RPGs. <laughs> I love them so much. There's a reason I made a whole show on this, on on my thing about playing weird RPGs. This is the discard pile. It doesn't need to be. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna make these cards a little more in frame because they're very much on the edge of the frame. So anyway, we uh we enter this kitchen. And leaning against the left wall is a door loosened from its hinges. Uh, it has a it has been elaborately carved with a series of uh, growing grape vines. Uh, with, and these grape vines circle around an ominous looking chalice. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of the room. Ooh, weird west. That's fun. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of the room is, is is not in as good of repair as this well carved wooden door. Uh, over against the uh, over against the wall, there is a large uh, there is a large stove with a series of three cast iron pots uh, that look like they have seen better days. They are completely red with rust. Uh, one has a small, uh, one has a small chunk of wood around the handle, and you can tell that, uh, we can tell that each of these three pots used to have wooden handles, but they have rotted away over time. Uh, there is a large, ominous-looking cleaver, um, leaning against the backsplash of the kitchen. Uh, it is also rusted and, uh, looks to have been very sharp in its day, but has fallen from grace in a severe manner uh and as we are poking around you know we open the we open the oven uh, and find nothing in there uh we you know we we start rummaging through the doors and as, uh, through the drawers and as we pull one outward uh the laughter of a child rings in our ears just <laughs> yay cookies and uh we immediately go mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. no 
I do not want small child laughter in my ears. And we turn to leave and realize how much time has passed. Uh, it's a normal amount of time. Hooray. Uh, we turn to leave and immediately rush into the, um, into the pantry. I forgot a door into the living room. There's supposed to be a door right here, I promise. I'm not just arbitrarily drawing doors. There really is a door here. Well, it's it's more over here, but it's fine. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not just arbitrarily drawing doors. We immediately go, uh-uh. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I don't have time for ghosts today. And uh, we step into the pantry and find... Oh, uh, whammies. Uh, what do we find? We don't find the item, I can tell you that. Uh, it is soundless and enormous. Uh, which is very strange, because it's normally a very small room. Uh, a wall of books that are raggedly bound in skin. And, um... And the ground is covered in plaster and wood. Uh, so as we step into the pantry, uh, our steps kind of crunch, crunch, crunch. And we look down. We look down first to see what we're stepping on to make sure we're not stepping on something horrifying. And find that it is just a, just a small pile of plaster and ro slowly rotting wood boards. Uh, we look up next to see where they have fallen from. And there are chunks of the ceiling missing, uh, roughly corresponding to where these, uh, where these hunks of plaster are. Um, and with it, and uh, as we are looking, uh, as we as we bring our eyes down to see the rest of the room, we find that the room stretches eerily off into the distance so far that there is a there is a thin brown horizon line. This room is absurdly long, and all along one wall to our left, uh, in in shelving that you can tell was originally designed to hold canned foods and various sundries is now covered in a series of library books but bound in a light pink leather that with a sickening with a sickening gulp sticking in your throat you realize uh, you you have an idea of what they are and we reach out very very slowly and uh, almost touch one of the spines, then think better of it as a breeze rustles all of the books, and we pull back in shock. And realize that if we're going to touch these things, we should probably be wearing a glove, so we run it around and grab a glove, and through the thin membrane of this glove, touch one of the spines of the book, and find with abject horror that these are bound in human skin. It's well-preserved, but that doesn't make it any less gross. Um, and we uh, we consult the blueprint that we walked in with, uh, kind of confused. We were expecting a little room barely long enough to walk through in a few steps, uh, but instead the room the room you know stretches with an absurd length. And the longer we try to resolve what's on the horizon, the more our head starts to spin. And we lose track of what we were thinking and why we were here. But thankfully, we manage to shake it off quickly enough that it doesn't necessarily matter. And we decide that, uh, pigskin, right? I've heard it looks the same. Uh... <laughs> Weirdly, it can if you bind it in the right way. And don't ask how I know that. Um, and we decide to... Uh, we, we grip at our head and shake it as we step hurriedly back over the threshold of the pantry and rushing through the kitchen blindly, almost tripping over a few things on the floor, we find ourselves in the library. We stumble up the stairs into the library. And what we find there is dictated by our cards. That was almost what we needed, this three. Yeah, we don't have it. We didn't find any of the items yet. So what do we find? 
we find that the room is, the nine of hearts is withered and jumbled. Uh, it, we find within the location an object, a burned deck of playing cards, and the condition of the location is pristine. It is untouched for years. As we stumble up the stairs, uh, our eyes go wide as we find a library that is clearly someone's personal library. There is a series of Goosebumps books uh, neatly arranged along the wall. Uh, a few, a few uh, pop science texts from uh, what looks like around the 1970s or the 1980s, uh, and a few other well-cared-for books. And then we look one shelf up, and it's completely in disarray. The books are crammed in every which way. The spines have been clearly worn and cracked. They are worn and cracked from overuse and abuse, even. These books are squeezed in edgewise on this top shelf. And then the second shelf is very orderly. And then the third shelf, uh, clearly, someone has just been, you know, taking books in and out of it very often. Uh, and so there's there's occasionally books tilted over on their side, and there's a few books that are turned to face the viewer, uh, so you can see their covers. Um, other than looking a little lived in, the room looks pristine. It looks like someone came through here and cleaned it perfectly. The white shelves that house these books uh, that are built into the wall here are... Uh, are absolutely pristine. There is not an ounce of dust on any of the window sills, uh, and the little nook to read in next to the stairs here looks like someone, uh, practically speaking, could have been uh, reading there mere moments ago. There is even a small mug of some warm drink uh, that slowly steams in the little area, uh, and beside the small mug of steaming something we can't quite tell what uh we find that there is a scarred pack of white playing cards we once again reach out with our gloved hand and pick it up very carefully very slightly and slowly edg edging the pack open uh like like so a bit like this just kind of slowly edging it open it gets caught and we struggle and fumble trying to open it one-handed, but eventually manage to open it and slide the cards out to find that half the card, that literally half the cards are not there. The cards are singed off at the bottom in such a way that the it is cut along the mirror line. You know how cards have this mirror symmetry line down the middle? It cuts right here. And they are perfectly burned that way. And something or someone has put those cards back into the box in such a way that the ash holds up the, the second half of the card. And uh, we very, very gently set those cards back down and back away. Like, I'm sorry. And, and, and we, we, we literally vocalize as we're looking around the room. Uh... We're looking around the room, we back into um, a bed frame that lets out a small, annoyed creak, and we startle and jump forward and spin around and go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb anything, I'll just go. And uh, we manage to avoid getting whammied on time, and... Uh, this room kind of puts us off the, the second floor, and we decide to turn back around. And this time, uh, find ourselves in the living room. So what do we find in the living room? We find the Ace of Hearts. We find that the ambience is silent and tense. We find in the room a large door in the far corner cold emanating from it and it is it has a large pool of water in the center of the room so we enter the uh we enter the living room with great care uh 
getting increasingly nervous about the strangeness of this house and find that the room is pin drop silent. Uh, over, over on the left side of the room, as we peek around the pantry that seems to have restored to its normal size, we see a large tube television that silently sparkles with static. Uh, on top of it are two very large and pointy rabbit ear antennae. Um, but unfortunately we can't seem to approach it because there is a large puddle of water filling the center of the room. Uh, it continues to drip, drip, drip from the center of the room. If we, and we consult our blueprints very hastily and look and realize that it's, the dripping is coming from the bathroom. So something is leaking up there and has made this large pool but as we look, as we gaze down into the pool, uh, we realize that uh, it is mirror smooth, uh, except for the drips. Uh, the drips seem to concentrate their rings in the center of the pool and do not radiate outward. They go about mm, two hands worth in the center and the rest of the pool is mirror smooth and as we are looking confusedly at these rings that seem to stop arbitrarily we see in the reflection on the floor uh in this corner here there is a massive stone door that uh seems to be emanating fog and we very slowly turn you know turn and look at the uh Look at the door, look at it up and down, and go, um, you know, there wasn't a fridge in the kitchen. Is Does this lead down to the root cellar? Uh-huh, it definitely leads down to the root cellar. This is not a horrifying eldritch cult. A horrifying eldritch cold door. I'm not opening it, but I'm sure it goes down to the root cellar. Let's ignore that. And we, uh, we thankfully managed to shake off whatever influence was trying to worm its way into our mind. Um, and as we walk past the stone door, uh, we realize that beneath the stone door is a small, uh, a small orange woven fabric upholstered couch that has been thoroughly squished by this door. And we enter the conservatory. What do we find in the conservatory? We find that... We find that we do not find any items, first and foremost. Uh, we, that we also find that the conservatory is awful and fearful in ambience. Uh, we find that there, there is a desk covered in papers in the conservatory. And last but not least, the conservatory is in drafty condition. A wind blows. So, as we enter the conservatory, uh, we find that the glass has not been cleaned in many years. And so, almost abstract pillars of sunlight illuminate random things within this conservatory there is a small uh there is clearly what used to be a small mint plant there's a small pot you know yay big and uh out of this pot uh the roots have cracked out of this pot uh this mint plant has sprawled over the floor and its leaves sway sway gently in the wind coming from the cracked windows directly in front of us. Uh, in addition, there is a small, uh, clearly what used to be a working table for this conservatory right about here. Um, and it clearly used to be a working table for the conservatory because there's a series of small plant shelves above it and a small bag of potting soil spills downward onto this massive sheaf of papers. We approach the desk carefully, slowly, with great worry in our hearts, and find that the... Uh-oh. Uh 
<laughs> that means time has passed in an uncomfortable... Oh no, an ace is fine. It's just Jack, Queen, King, and Joker means other things happen. Okay, so no, time passes normally. We approach the desk and find that amongst these papers, uh, we have been very lucky so far that time has continued to pass normally and function correctly in here. Um, <laughs> as we approach this desk, we realize that it is mostly just unremarkable ordinary papers you know some tax forms a few uh a few pages from an un from an unremarkable typewritten document uh rattling on about uh cattle statistics and the importance of uh soil management uh but hidden amongst the sheaf of papers is a single hand drawn sigil It looks hastily done, like someone was not quite sure whether they were going to draw it correctly. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. No, I got it wrong. Okay, I got it wrong, so it looks... It looks like someone tried to draw a sigil, and then realized they got it wrong, scribbled it out hurriedly, and tried again. Unfortunately, they got this far before they went to uh, make a marking and were dragged away. Uh, our blood runs cold at this. Uh, we look around, horrified that they were going to find a skeleton hanging from the ceiling by its foot, uh, and find that that didn't quite happen. Uh, one of the other remaining sunbeams in the conservatory highlights a s what used to be a small uh, what used to be a small Venus flytrap is now a massive swamp. A massive swampy bottomed plant that has mouths as large as our hand and a single fly lands on one of the smaller mouths and it immediately snaps shut and we can hear the fly struggling within as we turn and walk out of the conservatory terror filling our heart and we instead try to go upstairs to see maybe uh, why that water dripping out of the bathroom is behaving so strangely. So what do we find in the bathroom? We very carefully uh, tiptoe through the library, doing our level, our level best to not disturb any of the books, or really anything in that room. First we find the Five of Hearts, the Seven of Clubs, and the Queen of Diamonds. We do not find an item. Okay, I was hoping the cards would play nice with me and give me a little narrative work. Uh, so we find that we enter the bathroom. Uh, we go through a bedroom that is, frankly, unremarkable. Uh, it is just an ordinary, somewhat musty bedroom. Uh, there is a small... Uh, weirdly, the door on the bedroom does not have a door handle, but instead has a rotted plush cow tail we very gently pull the door open without touching the cow tail and instead find ourselves in the bathroom uh, it is gray and rapturous we find within it a heaving absurd lump of rotten meat Ooh. um <laughs> and the ground is covered in papers so we enter this bathroom and we were expecting the shower the bathtub perhaps the sink to be dripping instead some horrifying meat creature has grown its way uh, with spindly fingers reaching like stalagmites up toward the shower head uh and where the fingers have reached the shower head, they have split and burst and started to bleed. This thing sits in a pile of its own blood and filth that fill the bathtub 
which slowly drips out of it. Biohazard mask to filter the rotting smell? Absolutely. We process what this looks like visually and realize it is what's dripping into the living room. Uh, and we immediately turn and run as fast as we can, uh, trying not to puke the whole way along because the horrific smell has hit our nose this mere moments after we've opened the door. And we come back with our mask on. <sighs> The, uh, the smell still twinges our nose, nose, but does not fill it in the same way that it did when we first came in here. And now that we are not being assaulted by this horrific, horrific smell, we realize that practically every part of the bathroom floor, except for under the bathtub, has been filled with sheaves of paper. We, we, put, we hastily put on a second glove because this is going to take both of our hands to search through and we start paging through the documents. And most of the documents are pretty standard, uh, you know, birthing charts for cattle and uh, invoices for various supplements and um, uh, a few invitations to various weddings and birth recognitions and newspaper clippings. Uh, but in amongst these, we also find a small circular sigil this time. Uh, but it does not look finished. Within the circle, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen uh, dots. And these dot on these dots is drawn very, very delicately what looks like mm -hmm. a small home plate. Uh, within the home plate, there is another line and another half of a line, but it does not look finished. Uh, we hastily stuff this sigil this part of a sigil into our pocket hoping it will come in handy later but in the process of digging through all of the papers we uh we find that yeah in the process of digging through all the papers we find that one of them uh, as we pick up the sigil off of the floor the house rumbles beneath our feet. Shuffle in two random cards from the discard pile. So we'll pick... Mm, the house rumbles beneath our feet, and we know not what just happened. But we do know that something just happened, and it was not good. As the dust settles, we realize that perhaps we should, um, perhaps we should look in another room. This place, with its horrifying, drippy, flesh golem thing, uh, its horrifying, drippy flesh monstrosity is really giving us the willies. And so we wander, uh, we realizing we have our gas mask on now or a filtration mask on, I should say, uh, we realize that it is now probably safe to hack through the, um, hack through the, uh, sportive body that coats the, um, that coats the door out of the mudroom forward. And so we, we chop our way through there and step forward into the hallway where we find something. Oh, come on, item. No items. Uh, we do not find items. We find that it is in a turbulent and noxious uh, state, which is very accurate given what I've described it as. Uh, we find an upright piano. 
I was really hoping we'd pull that for the music room, but okay. And we find that it is disordered and unclean. So as we chop our way through this mushroom plug that was filling the door, we realize that the entire hallway is coated in these blue blinking mushrooms. This, the bodies of these things are everywhere. They are growing down out of the light fixtures. Uh, there used to be there used to be something that you assume were stairs right about here. They are completely blocked by these mushrooms. They are entirely impassable. And as we are walking through this room, trying not to touch anything, we step on these horrifying glowing blue mushrooms and clouds of these blinking and glowing blue mush mushroom spores fly upward and we and we pray that our filter filtration mask is uh, able to respond to particles in the right way to not get these things into our lungs uh, time passes normally so we we uh, hurry our way through the hallway and spot next to the door uh, next to the doorway or next to the closed sliding door to the music room, there is a small piano. There is a small upright piano shoved against the wall, and despite our best efforts, we do not manage to resist the urge to the piano. And as we do, the mushrooms blink in time to these notes, and we kind of raise an eyebrow and <laughs> shake our heads. And realize, as interesting as that is, we need to see what's in the music room. I forgot to draw doors all over the place, apparently. I forgot to draw that there was a door to the dining room here. And a door to the bedroom here. <laughs> I'm forgetting doors all over the place. <laughs> as much as we want to sit there and... Uh, give these uh, mushrooms our best impression of whatever piano music that we can recall from our long forgotten piano lessons to get them to really blink and blink and rave at us uh, we resist the urge for now and we move to the music room and find that we still do not find the items we're gonna run out of time at this point like time in game the spades i mean uh we find that the music room is overwhelming and malevolent. So as soon as we slide open the door, uh, something overwhelming happens. I have an idea. Uh, we find in the music room a drawer full of receipts, and we find that there are pipes exposed behind the drywall. So as we enter, uh, we hear a sound blasted into our ears, and our hands immediately clasp over our head uh, so that we do not damage our hearing uh, and even despite the even despite the hands over our ears we find that we can still hear loud and clear as though it's being conducted through our skeleton rather than the air the sound of a cacophonous orchestra tuning up it sounds the best way I can describe it is cacophonous. It sounds like every musician in the orchestra is tuning to a different note. There is so much discord that it blends into some kind of horrific modern harmony, uh, grating our teeth and our eyes start to vibrate with the sound of it. The timpani tuning their, uh, tuning each drum thudding so loud we can feel it pumping alongside our heart and uh, just as we are about to be rent apart by the sheer volume of what's happening they all resolve onto the same a and we heave a sigh of relief as they stop playing uh, our vision swims for a long moment and we once it cl manages to clear uh, we see along the uh, along the right wall there are organ pipes that extend into the wall uh, 
as a small, uh, seemingly computerized organ has these pipes that extend into the wall, uh, we slowly reach out to touch one of the keys. And time passes normally, so we don't get too distracted by it. We slowly reach out to hit one of the keys and hear a very pleasant little uh, MIDI organ. The envelope is set to be very long and very slow, so that one note that we just barely pressed and the the pipes that run into the wall uh, slowly hum their own uh, resonant tone as they are responding to the harmonics that come out of this single note and uh, as the single note from the organ fades away we hear very very faintly ringing in our ears and we look around and wonder why those organ pipes are there if this is computerized anyway. And then we remember this is a church. And it makes a little more sense. At least they're organ pipes and not organ pipes, we think. Uh, considering what, how disgusting it would be if, that, if those pipes were instead some kind of intestine or esophagus. Uh, what? We were supposed to find a drawer full of receipts, I think. Yes, a drawer full of receipts. As we turn to leave, uh, we see a small desk uh, positioned right about here. And uh, one, of the one of the drawers of the desk is stuffed full of receipts, so much that it could not close properly. We resist the urge to open that drawer, open a longer, wider one next to it, and realize that it is very carefully stored sheet music of various pop songs from, a, at the latest, 1970. We slowly close that drawer and open the drawer full of receipts. It is nothing but receipts for eggs. An incredible amount of eggs every time like 144 or more eggs every time and judging by the dates on the receipts as we shuffle through them these were these eggs were purchased practically days apart each time they were clearly driving a long way out of their way to get this many eggs they were buying out entire grocery stores for this many eggs and we just kind of yeah, exactly. Twelve dozen, 144. That's an entire gross. Uh, they, we kind of tilt our head and hope we don't find out why they were buying that many eggs as we enter the dining room and finally, finally find our item, our first item, which is the, da, 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 the flame of food. Okay. So, what do we find in the dining room? We find the flame, but we also find that the dining room is grim and seething, and there is an enormous monolith of made of rock 100 feet high. As we enter the dining room, we realize that the ceiling is cavernously tall, to such an incredible degree that we are 100% aware that it could not normally fit here. Uh, and we do our best to try and not regard how tall the ceiling is. But as we're looking down from that ceiling that is absurdly tall, that would clearly be clipping uncomfortably, cl clipping completely through the bedroom we saw uh, on the other side of the hall upstairs, uh, our eye is drawn to a massive stone monolith etched with uh, eldritch runes that we do not recognize and could not repeat to this day. Uh, extending down outward out of the monolith is an is a sacrificial stone altar that uh that is as long as the obelisk is tall carved into this stone altar are two fullers that guide the flow of blood down into a single pot that sits at our feet and in this pot that sits at our feet, there is a weakly flickering flame. Drawn on the pot is a simplistic representation of a little flame. 
you know, think like a, one of these. There's a little blobby flame. It has two little... Uh, there, there are children's crayon marks on the flame to have given it a little small, happy face. Uh, but in this uh, ceremonial jar burns this weakly wiggling flame. And we hope that we don't have to feed it any more blood to get it to... Uh, to get it to burn brighter. As we are thinking, oh, I hope I don't have to uh, feed it any more blood, the world begins to shift beneath our feet. We grasp hurriedly our hands around the jar full of the, f full of the flame of foo, and find that the r when we look up again uh, from this flame's hypnotizing slow movement back and forth that the dining room has completely changed around us. Instead of the massive overpowering stone obelisk and its associated uh, altar, we instead find that the room is completely empty of anything except for a single high-backed dining chair. And, si and uh, sitting on this high-backed dining chair is another one of our items. Uh, the... A series of candles. Uh, so we'll get back to that. There are... There are four... There, no, wait. There are five candles. There are a purple candle, a black candle, a red candle, a blue candle, and in the center, a white candle. Sitting on this uh, dining chair. This high-backed dining chair that we find is the only thing in this room yeah that we find is the only thing in this room and as we approach the high back to dining chair uh we look down on these candles that seem to be completely unlit and find that they are placed at five points in a five points within a circle like so. So this is the black candle. This is the red candle. This is the uh, blue candle. Um, did I say green candle? Black, red, blue. I, I want to say I didn't say green because that would be magic colors uh, anyway the white col the white uh candle is in the center and the last candle whose color escapes me we're gonna make it green no no, no it was purple uh the purple candle is here and uh we gently pry the candles off of the chair and when we oh purple not green thank you i I just barely remembered that, so I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, as we just barely managed to carefully pry the purple candle, which is the last one we pull off of the chair, uh, off of the chair, uh, we look away from the chair, and when we look back, instead of the chair is the massive stone door that was emanating an unsettling cold that we thought we saw in the living room earlier. It fills our vision and our eyes begin to swim for one long moment, but we manage to shut them and shake our head and rush out of the room before whatever strange, foul things that were carved into this door uh, sink their way into our mind. And we stumble, eyes closed, into the bedroom adjacent to the dining room. What do we find there as we open our eyes? Sentient Door does want a friend. Unfortunately, Sentient Door's idea of friendship is uh, completely ravaging the uh, squishy brain meats inside your head. So we do not want to befriend the Sentient Door. Uh, we find... As we open our eyes, uh, I'm gonna grab 
means. Where was... We have the candle and the flame, don't we? Yes, we have the candle and the flame. I'm going to leave these out so we know that we have them. Uh, anyway, as we open our eyes, we find that the room is incredible and odorous. Uh, there is, within the room, glass shards in the walls from a shattered window. And uh, a corner in the ceiling is covered in mold. So the corner, as we enter the room, we immediately see that the window that was about right here has shattered its glass inward and placed... Uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five... Uh, five shards of glass in the shape of the outside of that sigil we had seen drawn uh, earlier, uh, pinned into the wall perfectly. And uh, as our eyes kind of look past those shards of glass and go, huh, I've seen that before, uh, we see that an entire corner of the room has been completely consumed by those blue blue glowing mushrooms and uh and we realized that hey uh those have continued to spread good thing i'm wearing this mask uh i should get out of here right now and we turn tail and run as we realize that there is uh there is very little in here we want oh no we're out of cards uh we're out of hearts anyway that means we are, uh, if we do not pull this item, they are fun, guys. Oh, no. Uh, so we have no way to get our last item. Uh-oh. That means we lose. We'll have to. Uh... So we uh, we wander out of the bedroom, and as we are pondering uh, the funguses, among us, uh, we, we look at... Uh, we, we wander back into the music room, this time our ears unassaulted by tuning up sounds, and find that within a very small closet that was originally designed to hold coats and boots and the like for people coming in through the porch, instead we find that uh, it is fragrant and jaundiced. Ooh, jaundiced. Uh-oh. Um... <laughs> There is a circle of large stones, and the door is ajar, and there's a smell of rancor. Uh, so as we uh, as we creak open this closet door, uh, we once again stumble backwards for a moment as we realize this room has ballooned in size. It's now, instead of being a small closet room, sized room it is now the size of a small meadow the floor has been growing grass and it seems to have an entire ecosystem going on in here um and uh if we did not have our uh, our filtration mask on we could tell that this this meadow would smell like it was not in fact a meadow but a pasture for the grazing animals that uh the that the farmhouse used to manage. Uh, and uh, in the center of the room, there is a, there is a circle of large pointed stones. Uh, within, the, within the circle of large pointed stones, we find the other half of the glyph that someone was trying to draw in the room. And it just looks like a little bow tie. Like so. And uh, we don't quite know the uh, significance of this particular glyph, but we know we immediately can tell that it, it was what the uh, what the person was trying to draw in the other room, and the significant points of which uh, were outlined by the candles that rattle around in our bag. As we move to enter the um, As we move to enter the porch, uh, we realize that our time has grown far too short.
we step into the porch and realize that it um we realize that as we step into the porch we find that it has also ballooned in size uh it extends arbitrarily far forward and we take one step forward we take another step forwards we take another and another and another and an uncountable volume of steps later we find that far far behind us we see a small little speck and as the sun glints off of this small little speck uh, we find that the uh, we can see somehow the small bottle labeled SB is far, far behind us, and it is too late to grab it. We reach out in hopes that our arm will stretch in, in, an uncanny, in a similarly uncanny fashion to the room itself, and we reach and reach and reach, and our finger, our arm seems to extend with an uncanny creaking and groaning and squelching sound. Uh, and just as our fingers are about to close around this bottle, uh, the a searing pain fills our arm and we scream. We scream a scream that is not governed by the speech center of our brain. It is just sound that we are releasing in response to this pain, like something has been inserted into our nerves and is being jiggled. And as we look down at our unnaturally extended arm, it continues to, uh, it continues to grow this time out to the left and to the right spiraling outward like a like a, a, a grasping vine searching for something to hold and we look down the scream still coming from our mouth our eyes processing this un this unholy thing that is occurring to us and we pass out when we come back to our entire arm is gone the house is gone we look around and find that we are in, in a near endless meadow, the candles clinking together in our bag and the pot full of fire now flicker, now rather than being flickering, uh, burns away like a massive bonfire. We look around and see that we can see nothing but this meadow until the horizon on all sides. Distantly, we hear people screaming, a scream that sounds incredibly familiar to our ears. Because we were just screaming it a few moments ago. We know that there is an unspeakable horror happening to... <laughs> we know there is an unspeakable horror happening to the world around us, but we are removed from it all. Just alone in this meadow. That was our journey into the hill house, my friends. We failed. The world is torn asunder. We don't quite know what happened. Also, <laughs> This was nasty. I can't put my left arm to get out of there. I'm dying. <laughs> we failed. Whatever thing was inhabiting this house and toying with us as we were searching, uh, it escaped. It is now ruining the world. Uh, oops. Our job was uh, was to find what was warping this house and destroy it, or at least destroy its access to this world, and we completely whiffed. 
we were only saved by two of the three artifacts in our bag. And one of the artifacts seems to have very happily feasted upon the energy that was given to it for a long moment. I like this. I like this a lot. This would be super, super fun to play. Like, I don't know if you can play this with more than one person. This is super, super fun to play, like, in a building you know. I hope I was getting across, like, the descriptions of this building, because this is based on a building I've been in. This is based on a building I know very well. Um, I've changed a few of the details around, just to make it a little more fun. But uh, <laughs> I based this on a building I know. So you can walk into a building you know and, you know, really look at how it would change if it were left alone for a hundred years and see what sort of horrific things have grown upon it. This is, uh, this is a great way to get that sort of, um, haunted house flavor when it is not haunted house season. I like that a lot. Um, I like that you look through 13 rooms uh, especially if you are, it, which is especially fun if you're building a building that has, uh, more than 13 rooms, and so your character just does not see the unspeakable horrors in some of these rooms, because they just don't happen to walk into them. I appreciate being your bedtime story. I, I think, I, I'm, I'm flattered that you're using me that way, uh... There are some optional rules that make this really fun to come back to. Uh, there is an entire second table of location aspects. There are There is a way to play a longer game. You can pick three more locations and add another joker to the, uh, to the spades, the time tracker. Uh, you can make casting the spell harder. You can designate a room as the room with the portal, and so you need to get back there. Uh, to cast the spell. Uh, multiple players working as a group, but separately and possibly asynchronously, may go exploring the house together. One person draws the house while the other players take turns describing the house. You can narrate into a call or narrate sitting around a circle. Split up or stay together, it's up to you. There are major curses. If you draw two of the same number at a location, you immediately teleport to a previously visited visited room, but the descriptors are the new cards. What do you see? Or, if you draw three of the same number at a location, uh, the portal devours a room that you have not visited. Uh, minor curses. This These look really fun. Uh, annoying inconveniences that take place when you flip over a jack, queen, or king in the time deck, the spades. Minor curses happen in addition to the normal passing of time. When you reveal a jack, roll the d6. Based on the result of the die roll, you must compose your description of the room without using the letter that corresponds to the die roll. So you are completely barred from one of your vowels or Y. And then you pull another card and resolve as usual. When you reveal a queen, your written description must follow a rhyming couplet pattern. A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, or... Yeah, essentially you have to describe the room in rhyming couplets. That's so fun. That's so fun. Or when you reveal a king, you must incorporate specific words in your written description. Choose six from the following list that you must use. That's so fun. I... This would be great for, like, generating haunted houses. Just, like, generating locations that are unsettling to the player. Uh, yeah, this is super, super fun. I really liked this. Um, I'm not... I'm not usually huge on horror, but I love describing horror. I love expositing and i really loved getting to like draw down a building and and then as i walk through it describe it i think it'd be really interesting if you just drew like an arbitrary building and just 
completely on the fly describe the buildings based on the cards that you were pulled. I had a lot of fun kind of like squeezing the existing descriptions of the rooms through the filter of the cards. But either way, it'd be really fun. I like this a lot. I like this a whole lot. I'm probably not going to play it on camera again, but I'm definitely going to play it on my own time more. Uh, this was super, super fun. Uh, that's my thoughts in a nutshell. I'm also just, a, I'm a big fan of the way that, like, it feels almost tarot-like. You're like, okay, what's the first aspect? What's the second aspect? What's the third aspect? Okay, those are the things I have. Now how much time has passed? I like that it uses each suit of the deck directly for each prompt, but does not do it in... It does it in a semi-random fashion, rather than a truly random fashion like some of the other card games we've done. And I think the prompts are really, like, the pl the prompts are really well written. They have that sort of, uh, the, sort of the same effect that, like, Beyond Super or, um, oh, one of the Wretched and Alone games had where it is a very simple prompt, but there are other layers that you apply to the prompt that make it, that limit it just enough. Sorry, there's a fly. Uh. I really like that. This was a blast to play. I heartily suggest it. Uh, this game, once again, was... This game, once again, was The Portal at Hill House by Travis D. Hill and Lindy M. Ferris Hill. I liked this. I liked this a lot. Uh, there are four entire rooms of this building that I did not describe because of the rules of the game. That leaves you all some blanks to work in if you want to build on this. If you want to have someone else walk into this building and try again. You know, maybe someone is flung back in time because of the mess that happened. And they get another chance to try to solve this problem. Feel free to use this building layout and have them approach... Uh, have them approach things differently than I did. And that would be a lot of fun. Let me know if you do that. That'd be really cool. There's no reason you couldn't do this again or one like it for the stream. It was interesting. There's absolutely no reason I couldn't do it again for stream. There's a whole second table of uh, area descriptions. I just don't want to eat up too much time doing a game again when I have so many other games in the queue. Uh, hopefully next week we can play bumbling i need to print out some hex maps for that uh but if i don't get around to printing a hex maps we'll play something other than bumbling uh, i think it's called wretch maybe uh like like so wretch yeah it, it, that's what it is um in a nutshell that game is about uh dredging a supernatural lake which seems really fun it's another carta game which, I don't know if you can tell, I love Carta games where they built the board. Uh, I have a bunch of Carta games planned. But anyway, we'll, we'll wind up playing uh, Bumbling or Wretch next week. Uh, but later in the week, we're starting a new book on Paper Cuts. I cannot stress that enough. New book. New book. We're starting a new book. I won't spoil what it is yet. Uh, but we are starting a new book, and that is the best time to join us for Paper Cuts. Dracula was a bit of a special case last the last month or so because you can just kind of drop into dracula and as a modern reader you kind of have a rough idea of what's happening uh but we're starting a new book and i beg of you i plead with you best time to join us again uh because you can just drop in and be like oh yeah i know what the story is from the beginning it's really great uh so anyway uh this has been tabletop rpg time I don't have a nice outro like I do for paper cuts, but uh, I hope you all enjoyed the story I told. Come back next week for more.